Hello, everybody! We made it! It is the first inaugural Ryan Selvi holiday special. Hello to so many people that are here. Um, a big hello uh, to Jordan, to Seth, to Justin, um, Anthony, Yo Daddy, uh, Fresh Cake, um, Ty, Jack, John, Hank, Anna, Nate. I'm sorry if I missed anyone's name as I was flying through those, but um, oh, Shady's here too. We got a lot of people here that are all um, actually a part of it. So I'm gonna try to call out everyone's stuff as we make it through um, because there is a lot of collaboration and so many people sent me so many great things and I'm trying to find some really awesome ways to incorporate them into the stream. Um, but we've got a, we got a loaded day for you, uh, or night, I guess, wherever you are. Um, but we're gonna start off with um, good old Blair here, and she's gonna be walking us through a, um, a, a, a cocktail and a uh, little some snacks. So, with no further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring Blair on over, and I'm gonna press the transition right now. All right, and I'm passing the microphone to her. Hi. I don't know if I can be seen yet. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Blair, for those of you who don't know. Um, today, we are going to be doing a few things throughout the stream that are mostly based on how to throw a little soiree for your very close and intimate friends and family, preferably the people you already live with. Okay, let's get started. So today we're going to be making uh, crispy potatoes with a white dipping sauce. So I have my potatoes. I've already um, quartered the big ones and cut them in half. So the first thing that we're going to do, our vegetable oil is heating up. And then we're going to toss those in and we're actually going to fry them before they roast in the oven. Kind of like a papachas bravas situation. So while the oil is heating up, we're going to get to work on our cauliflower. So. With this. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god! Merry Christmas! Santa! I didn't know you were coming so soon! Oh, of course, you've been such a good girl! I had to give you a present! Oh. Oh. Santa, I love presents! Of I love course. presents so much! Merry wait, wait, Blair, 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 okay, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know you're in the middle of your thing, um, but actually, a lot of, a lot of people actually wait until Santa shows up, um, like at the end, like uh, like Santa, you know, you know, with Macy's, you know, Macy's sure. day parade right, right. You know, every year. The end, you know, like <laughs> that's you're true. the big reveal. Sure. You know, you, that's true. People, you know, have something to wait for. If, if you tune in, I, I was in the neighborhood flying over, and I thought. Is there anywhere else you could maybe stop by? Or? I guess I could go to Taiwan for a bit. Yeah, you that sounds also, good. You All can right. leave that, though. No, 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 I'll be back. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll be uh, circling back to that present. I mean, Santa, it's fine, it's fine, I'm fine. So, I have my cauliflower. They're chopped into just like little bite-sized pieces because they will shrink a little bit in the oven, but not a lot. I have a uh, purple, green, and white. And I'm actually going to first pull a couple of these out and actually save them for our crudite plate that we're gonna make later. So we'll have some cooked, we'll have some raw on there. I'm just gonna take some of these out. Yeah. And then the first thing that we're gonna do, basic, we're just gonna dress it with a lot of olive oil. Our oven is preheating. Salt, and then some pepper, and we're gonna toss that on a sheet tray, and we're gonna get that in the oven. This is one of those things where like, you don't have to do cauliflower. You can roast broccoli the same way. You can roast broccoli rob the same way. You can do Romanesco the same way. Any kind of like hearty, cabbage looking situation, you can do the exact same thing. You can also do a spice blend on here. I'm gonna be throwing a little bit of harissa, but you could do paprika. You can do uh, roasted red chili peppers. Like anything that you are into spice wise, can go on here. Just make sure that you do dry spices if it's gonna roast in the oven, otherwise they will burn. Just gotta 
bunch of crap in my oven for storage because I live in Brooklyn. All right, while all that is happening, we are gonna get started on our first cocktail. Now, uh, our friend Aaliyah is gonna be joining us later to give us a couple more options, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone had a little bevy to start off with. So what we have here are all of my ingredients. Um, it's really simple. You don't really have to know anything about being a bartender. I just have a fancy cup because my roommate does. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a uh, whiskey or brandy, whatever brown liquor you're kind of into right now. We all have those moments. So we're gonna take that. You're just gonna do a two ounce pour of whatever liquor you're into. And then you're gonna do two parts of apple cider. Now, you're, usually I would get like a spice cider, but they did not have that today. So inside of my honey simple syrup, which is just a fancy way of saying like I melted honey in water so it would be easier to mix in, I just added a little bit of pumpkin pie spice, which is pretty much what they would put in a spice cider. So you'll have that. Two ounce pour of that in there. You can also do one ounce if you don't like it super sweet. I usually don't, but it's the holidays, so like I'm here to play. Um, we need a little ice in there. And all you're gonna do with those is you're just gonna stir it until the ice is melted and it's well incorporated. You can also shake this one too if you like it to have froth on the top. Um, I'm not super into that, so I just like to do it with a stir. Glass. A couple of ice cubes in there. If I could get them out. And then all we have. Oh, y'all. See? This is what happens when you do it live. I almost forgot. We need a little bit of acid in here to tamp down all of that sweet. Um, if you like it even more acidic, you can also throw like a little tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in here, which just gives it like a little, little pucker. But we're gonna do something a little bit more basic. So we're just gonna give that a stir. Because I forgot it the first time as I splash my face a little. And then we're just gonna strain it only because there could be lemon seeds in there. You wanna do your glass almost a little bit more than halfway, and then we're gonna top it with a little bit of bubbles. Uh, Tobo Chico is my favorite because it's definitely like the most effervescent. It's so bubbly. So we'll put that guy in there to the top. I'll just move all this shit out of the way so y'all stuff fudge. I'm gonna move all this fudge out of the way so y'all can see. We're gonna take a orange. Take your peeler, just do yourself a little strip. And then we're gonna twist it around the edge to release all of those oils. Toss that little buddy in there. Get your cinnamon stick, toss that little buddy in there. And there you have it. Our naughty or nice on ice. All right, I'll see you guys in a little bit to check on all this nonsense. We got our first segment out of the way. Uh, we have some great drinks now, and then later we're gonna have some snacks, we have some music, we have some crafts, we... I'm sorry. Um, it's Dylan, so I'm gonna take it, uh, but it'll be, it'll be really quick, so just one second, one second. Hey, Ryan. Hey, man, what's up? I'm very excited to do the Christmas Village tour. Oh, wait, um, I'm, I, I didn't as... text you? Oh, I... Uh... No, no, I'm sorry. I thought I messaged you. Um, I, I just don't think we'll have okay, time. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's not that I don't want to. I mean, it, it, it looks, yeah, it looks know, great. I, I, you know, I went through all the trouble to set this up, but... Um, yeah, no, no, man. I mean, it looks, it looks good. No, I just, don't I, worry about it. I, I just don't think we have time. I'm sorry. It's fine. All right. Um, yeah, no, but okay. Um, cool. On to the next thing. All right, 
This is You Make It Feel Like Christmas. I want to thank the storm that brought the snow. Thanks to the string of lights that make it glow. I want to thank you, baby. You make it feel like Christmas. It barely took a breath to realize we're going to be a classic for all time. I want to thank you, baby. You make Gingerbread made with molasses, my heart skipped and I reacted, can't believe that this is happening like a present sent from God. Sleigh bells singing hallelujah, stars are shining on the street. I want to thank you, baby, you make it feel like Christmas. Thought I was down for the love had night, but you came along, I swear you saved my life, and I want to thank you, baby. Gingerbread made with the lasses, my heart skipped and I reacted. Can't believe that this is happening like a present sent from God. Sleigh bells singing hallelujah, stars are shining on the street. I want to thank you, baby. You make it feel like Christmas. I want to thank you, baby. You make it feel like Christmas. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll let everyone introduce themselves, but um, I guess I'll just start by saying this is my roommate and the farthest right. Um, so I am that close to town all the time. <laughs> but, you know, you guys can go. Yeah, I'm, I'm Rika LeBron. I'm Emma Ishta. I'm Jillian Seika. And we're officially a band. We, we are, are we are an unnamed band looking for names out there. So yeah. if anybody has any ideas, suggestions, suggestions, suggestions are taken in the chat. We uh <laughs> We need them. They said, thank you. You make it feel like Christmas. Uh-huh. No, no, you no, make you. it feel like Christmas. <laughs> so, yeah, no, definitely. I'll actually put it up here on the streamer announcement. I'll say band name suggestions, question mark. Is there a, is there a uh, reward? Is there like a... Yeah, yeah, it's a cash reward, $50,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's a missing those bank account. <laughs> <laughs> no, but right. we'll be back with more tunes. All right, and now we're going to switch over to my boyfriend, Ben! Get ready for it! Woo! <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> now you're good. <laughs> 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 we have to get to the microphone. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was really into that song and into Blair's delicious cocktail. I'm Aaron. I'm Ryan's boyfriend, and I love... <laughs> Actually, I think it started at a young age. Fun little story about my family and a Christmas tradition we have. Uh, My parents, when they were young, uh, they, for their first Christmas, didn't have that much extra cash to buy a tree topper. So they just crafted themselves a little star topper out of foil and an old Lucky Charms box. And to this day, 30 what years later, they still use it as their tree topper. So keep that in mind while you're doing some Christmas crafts that the Christmas crafts of today turn into the holiday traditions of tomorrow. Um, So I'm gonna show you a little bit of crafts. This segment is all about paper. Um, You know, you don't have to have a bunch of money to make it feel super, super Christmassy. So I'm gonna start with making some paper chains. Paper chains are super, super easy, especially for children. You just need to cut strips like this, you know, just, Cut it right down, hot dog style. You can also, you can use white paper. You can also use different kinds of construction paper. I have red and green, so I'm gonna do some uh, red strips here right now. Um, Yeah, and I love making Christmas crafts when you are just, you know, sitting by a fire, maybe not with paper, but um, (laughs) you're sitting by a fire, you're watching a holiday movie, got a drink or a cocktail, and you're just making it more Christmassy. So yeah, so I have my paper strips here. You can go ahead and measure it all out if you want. Thank you so much for taking a sip of my drink. You can measure it out if you want. I don't really care. I like to have it be different sizes. 
I think it's a lot more fun and looks more kitschy and handmade if you do that. So it's the easiest thing in the world. Make a little ring just like that. Bop, you staple it. And then you do it again. You staple it. See, it's not the most exciting segment, but it's got the most pizzazz. Am I right? So <laughs> you gotta make sure you use the, um, the close-up cam so people oh, can really, right, see right, the, right, right, really see the detail of these staples. Yeah, and you just Bob. keep going like that. Bob. And you can but what will it, come next, red or green? You can make it as long as you want. It would, I think it would it'd be green. It would probably be um, green. You can make it as long as you want, though, and then you can just string them from the ceiling or not. Did you know that's my favorite color? Green? Yeah. Well, <laughs> know what I'm getting you for Christmas? Green? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to 2D paper snowflakes. So, like I have an example right here. Very, also very simple to make. It's made out of paper. So what you do, you just, I like to do them in smaller sizes. You can totally make them at a larger size if you want. Um, so you're just gonna, I like to fold it in half, hot dog style, not hot dog, hamburger style. Like Which this. Hot dog or hamburger? <laughs> hamburger style. And then just cut down the middle. If yeah, Julian wants to know what the vegan option is. Yeah. <laughs> For paper? Yeah. Um, make your own. Uh, Chop a tree down. Hot dog or... Oh. Hot dog or hamburger? Oh, right. I don't know. Uh -oh. Tofu dog. Um, tofu dog. Impossible burger. Okay, so I just folded a little square, and then this is literally the hardest part of making a paper snowflake. Folding it so you get that six-pointed snowflake, because it's not a real snowflake if it doesn't have six points. So you're going to fold it into a little triangle like this, and right at the center, you're going to fold it again. And then right at the seam where it is, this is the hardest part, you're going to fold it in thirds like a brochure. Just like that. Bam. And then you cut off the little crown. And then this is the part where I really zone out. So you can just kind of cut whatever shapes you want. I like to start from the top and work my way down. Um, maybe add a little star right there. Make it look very nice. Yeah. Again, not the most exciting, but the most full of pizzazz. Um, yeah, holiday movies I like to watch while I'm doing these. You know, I love to watch Home Alone or Christmas with the Cranks. We just watched the Dolly Parton Christmas special, and that was fun, if not a little preachy, but it was fun. I'm almost done here. Let's add a <gasps> Santa! Oh my Merry gosh! Merry Christmas, Aaron! Santa, I'm so excited. I don't think I can see you. Oh, I just got back. Camera. Oh, I just got back from Taiwan and was passing by and Taiwan? you were such a good boy. Nothing's ever made there. What oh. is it? Wait, wait. No, 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 wait, no, no, I'm no, so no, excited. Santa, 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 Santa. We are like, we're like, huh? we're like 20 minutes in. We're like 20 minutes in. Oh, well, you've got to be we done. How long do these things night. last? It's a live stream. They last like days. That's crazy. <laughs> Who's watching for days? Forever. Wait, Ryan. Just, just not yet. Okay, well, I'm People sorry. are going to stop watching. I guess I'm going okay. to a different country now. What country Cambodia. Now? Cambodia. Cambodia this time. Taiwan to Cambodia. Why? I just don't feel like this might Bye, be the Santa. most effective <laughs> route. I'm going to finish my snowflake without a gift. I'm going to make a little tree here. Don't get a gift. You know, Ryan's never gotten me a gift ever. What? No, I'm kidding. He has. <laughs> <laughs> the gift of his presence. Because that's no, why they call it a present. Because he's always there. Um, almost ready for the big reveal. Also, this does get messy, but you're doing crafts. It's going to get messy. All right, see? And look at, oh, it fell apart. But it's still full of holiday cheer. Look at that snowflake. What and the more snowflake? you add, the more details you add, it'll look nicer. You know, can add little cuts here and there. I'm also going to move on to my 3D snowflake. This one's a little bit more difficult. You can see on the side I had uh, the difficulty rated by Jingle Bell. This one's actually four Jingle Bells. So it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Okay, so what you're going to do, again, the way you say, the same way. Let's get this out of here. Oh, you don't have to show the one over your left shoulder. Yeah, actually, so this is what we're going to be making. I'm just going to show you how to get it started. So. Again, you're gonna make a square. I'm gonna do a bigger size this time, just so you guys can see it. Just cut along this part right here. You have a square, and then you're gonna fold it again. And then you stop. And so the part where there's the seam, you wanna cut along the diagonal. So you're gonna cut like that. I don't know if this is showing up super well on camera. 
All right. And you're going to make four cuts. And then I cut off the end. So then it looks like this. Right? Awesome. It's a little accordion-y. All right. And then we're going to just tape the center points together like this. And that's why you need tape for this one. You're just going to tape from point to point. Oh, this is getting a little weird. All right. There we go. And then you're going to flip it over and then do the same thing with the other points. And you're going to work your way out. Very exciting. Very, very fun. Also, this is great because it makes a bit more of a substantial decoration with paper. Um, but you just, if you have a printer or if you have an, um, any kind of paper, you can use construction red paper, you can use notebook paper. You just, yeah, you can get really crafty with things. That's why I'm showing you this stuff. So we're almost done here. Right. All right, and so you get this, and you may say, like, this doesn't look like a snowflake. This looks like a weird eyeball. But the way you're just going to do that six more times. <laughs> I already have half of one done. And you're going to bring your stapler, and you're going to staple it to the end. Like so. And so and then says, eventually. I'm seriously going to be making snowflakes for the rest of the day. You should. That's the perfect way to spend your Christmas time. So, as you can tell, this isn't finished yet, but it will end up looking like this. Very crafty, very cheap, very easy to make. Um, yeah, so I hope, you know, you decorate your home with lots of paper. Thank you so much. Hi, welcome. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Welcome to the Hanukkah corner. This is the Hanukkah portion of the holiday special. Yay! You might know a little thing or two about Hanukkah, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown. All right. Hanukkah is called the Festival of Lights, and it's actually a pretty minor holiday when it comes to the Jewish people. It's only been made famous in America because of Christmas and rabbis were like, let's get these Jews something to be excited about during the Christmas time. And that's why we celebrate Hanukkah so much. But basically, the story of Hanukkah is like every other Jewish holiday. A bunch of people trying to kill a group of Jews and not being able to. In this case, it was the Greeks and the Maccabees, a small Jewish tribe. And so this much smaller army was able to push out the much bigger Greek army, but their temple was totally in ruins. It'd been ransacked, there was pig's blood everywhere, not a good place to be. And worst off, there wasn't enough oil to keep their menorahs lit. And a menorah is just something that Jews have in their temples all year round. It has seven uh, candle holders in it and you just keep it lit with sacramental oil. But there wasn't enough sacramental oil to keep it lit. And in order to get more, it would take eight days. But they found enough for one day, but it lasted all eight days and gave them enough to get more oil. And now we celebrate Hanukkah all over the world, but a lot in America, like I said before, because Christmas is so popular and Jews just, just wanted something to celebrate during the holidays. There are tons and tons and tons of great Hanukkah stories, but that's not true. There's a couple great Hanukkah stories, but I have a personal favorite. I've loved it my whole life. It's called Herschel and the Hanukkah Goblins. It was written by Eric Kimmel, and it's just a fun, fun, fun story. Who doesn't like goblins and who doesn't like Hanukkah? So I'm gonna share this story with you with a couple of fun props for the story. So here we go. It was the first night of Hanukkah, and Herschel of Ostropol was very cold as he was traveling around, and he came across this small town, and he was really excited because he was like, oh, it's the first night of Hanukkah. Like, I'm really tired, but people are going to be so welcoming. There's going to be singing and dancing and potato lockers and all that good stuff. But he gets there and there's not a single menorah in a window. And he's like, what's going on? This is a Jewish town. Where are all these Hanukkah menorahs? And he goes and he finds the rabbi and he's like, rabbi, what's going on? Why isn't anybody celebrating Hanukkah? And the rabbi's like, oh, we don't celebrate here because of the goblins. And he's like, say what? And he's like, yeah. Goblins, the king of the goblins doesn't like Hanukkah. All the little goblins come around, they blow out our Hanukkah candles, they throw our potato latkes on the ground, they smash our chocolate gel, they just don't let us celebrate. And Herschel's like, well, we gotta do something about it. And the rabbi's like, well, it's not so easy, you know? Like to defeat the Hanukkah goblins, the only way to do it is to go onto the synagogue that's on the top of that hill, super creepy looking synagogue, and spend all eight nights of Hanukkah there. And then on the eighth night, you've got to get the king of the goblins to light the menorah himself. So Herschel's like, I'm not afraid of no goblins. I'm gonna go. And the whole town is like, dude, you're the best. Here's a bunch of stuff. So they give Herschel some hard boiled eggs to eat and some pickles to eat. 
some fun Hanukkah gel, some menorahs, some dreidels, and he's on his way to celebrate Hanukkah in the creepy synagogue. So Herschel makes his way to the synagogue and he gets there and he sets up his menorah and he sets it up with just, oh no, <laughs> this isn't gonna work at all. Oh no, uh, uh. he sets it up with just two candles. And he's getting ready to light the candles when he hears a tiny bit of little voice say, you can't do that. And he's like, what is that? And it's this teeny tiny little goblet. And he's like, I'm gonna blow out your candles if you light those. And he's like, oh really? Are you little pipsqueak like you's gonna stop me? And little pipsqueak goblin's like, hey, you know what? I look a lot stronger than I look. I mean, I am a lot stronger than I look. Not that I look a lot stronger because that doesn't make no sense. You're going way out of your way here little goblin, let me show you what I'll do to you. And he takes one of the hard boiled eggs and he says, you see this stone? And the goblin's like, yeah. And he's like, bet you I'll crush you like I crush a stone. And he's like, no man is strong enough to crush a stone. And he's like, watch me. That's gonna be you, goblin. And the goblin runs away. He's like, oh no, oh no. And he runs away. So Herschel was able to light his first night of Hanukkah. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishanu Mitzvotav V'tivanu V'hadlik Ner Shel Hanukkah. Praise be thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us and guided us, I said the wrong thing, to kindle the Hanukkah lights. I'm not supposed to blow these out, so I won't. All right, let's move on. So that pipsqueak goblin, he runs away and he says, my brothers are gonna come back and they're a lot bigger than me. And Herschel's like, okay, I'll stop them too. The next night of Hanukkah comes and Herschel sets up another candle. He sets up another candle. We'll edit a lot of this out. Okay. And as he's celebrating the second night of Hanukkah, he gets ready to eat a nice pickle and he hears a voice say, hey, you're not supposed to be doing that. And he looks over and it's this big fat green goblin. He's like, oh, you wanna stop me? Oh, it's okay, buddy, look, I'm here, I'm peaceable. Look, hey, how much you have a pickle and we can chill and celebrate some Hanukkah. And the big greedy goblin's like, I like pickles. Yeah, I'm gonna take all your pickles. And he sticks his hand in the jar and he grabs all the pickles, but then he can't get his hand stuck out of the jar. And he goes, what have you done, you wizard? And Herschel's like, that's right, I am a wizard. And I got your hand stuck in that jar. And until you promise to leave and let me celebrate the second night alone, I'm gonna trap you here forever. And the, and the goblin goes, please wizard, let me go. And he goes, okay, just let go of the pickles. I, and he's like, I promise, I promise wizard. I, I won't, I won't, I won't disrupt Hanukkah. And he's like, okay, just let go of the pickles. And then you'll be free. And he lets, takes his hands off the pickles. And he gets his hand out of the jar and he's like, you tricked me. And he's like, you promised you gotta go. And he's like, oh yeah, goblins always keep their promises. And he leaves. <laughs> Herschel was able to celebrate the second night of Hanukkah. So Herschel got ready to celebrate his third night of Hanukkah. And just before he was about to light the candles, he feels eyes watching him from the dark corner. And he decides to instead put the candle down. And instead he starts playing with his dreidel. And he hears a voice say, hey, aren't you gonna light those candles? And he looks and he sees a big red goblin in the corner. And he's like, oh, maybe later. I figure I'll just play with my dreidel for a little bit first. You know, it's a fun game. And he's like, I don't like games unless you can win money. And Herschel's like, oh, you can win lots of money playing my Hanukkah game. And so the big goblin comes over and he's like, mm, teach me how to play. And Herschel's like, okay, I can teach you how to play. He says, this is Gimel. If it lands on Gimel, I get all the gold. This is hay. If it lands on hay, I get half the gold. And this is none. If it lands on none, you get none of the gold. So he kind of tricks him, you see? He only tells him the rules that are gonna allow him to win. But the stupid goblin doesn't realize that, right? So the goblin plays the game and he loses all of his gold. And Herschel takes all the gold from the goblin that the goblin had in his pocket. And the goblin's like, that's no fair, you tricked me. I got no gold now. And he's like, well, you better leave. So the goblin leaves and Herschel is able to celebrate Another night of Hanukkah. I've probably been lighting these candles wrong. Uh, 
so my rabbi is going to be mad at me. But technically, you're not supposed to do this. You're supposed to light all the candles from the shamas. But our shamas is a little finicky, and I don't want to keep lighting it. So I'm just going to do this. Bad you, bad you. All right. And that's the third night of Hanukkah. Things pretty much go like that. Herschel tricks a goblin, they leave, he laughs, and he lights a candle. So let's go ahead and set that up. Okay, I'll fix that later. <laughs> All right, there. And then get these guys lit. Oh no, why are you so difficult? Why'd I do it this way? And then we light it all. Nope, yeah. <laughs> oh no. All right, there we go. And. And, 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 ah, it's lit. Great. So, you're not, it's not your time. Three nights go by and Herschel handles all those goblins just like the ones before it. And it's the seventh night of Hanukkah and he lights the candles and no goblins show up. But then he hears a voice. Herschel, I am coming for you. And Herschel's like, who's that? You know who this is, Herschel. It is I, the king of the goblins. And Herschel's like, but you're not supposed to be here till tomorrow night. I'm very far away right now, Herschel. But my goblin powers allow me to see you and hear you. And I am coming for you tomorrow. So Herschel thinks... How is he going to stop this goblin? Moreover, how is he going to let this goblin light the Hanukkah candles? So, Herschel devises a plan. And the next night comes, and he turns off all the lights in the old synagogue. And he places the menorah at the front door with the Shamas candle next to it. The next night, he's sitting and waiting, and suddenly the walls start to shake. And wind starts to blow. And the window smashes open and wind comes through and Herschel's like, ah! And the door opens and a dark figure looms in the doorway and says, I have come, Herschel. Your demise is nigh. And Herschel says, uh, who? And the king of the goblins like, why, it is me. The king of the goblins, can you not tell by my horrible visage? And Herschel says, mm, it's pretty dark, can't see you. So I'm not really scared. And the king of the goblins goes, uh, oh, uh, you, you got a light? And Herschel's like, actually, there's some at the front door. So the king of the goblins lights the shamas, and then he holds the candle in front of his face, and he says, do you see me now, Herschel? Do you see me? And Herschel goes, no, it's pretty dark still. So the king of the goblins lights the first candle. But Herschel says it's still too dark. So he lights the second candle. And the third. E. 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 And the fourth. And the fifth. And meanwhile, Herschel is saying the Hanukkah prayer. And King of the Goblins says, Do you see me now, Herschel? I am the King of the Goblins. And Herschel says, I do see you but I just got you to celebrate Hanukkah, dog. And all of a sudden, the King of the Goblins goes, no! And a big storm hits the synagogue. <laughs> and the walls go blind. <laughs> and all the bricks and the... <laughs> Until nothing is left on the hilltop except Herschel and the menorah. And suddenly, he hears it. Hanukkah songs from the village. Dreidel, 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 I've made you out of clay. <gasps> and he starts to head down to the village and sure enough, in every window, every single one has a menorah fully lit for all nights of Hanukkah. And all the people in the village are celebrating and the rabbi's celebrating and they all greet Herschel as a hero and they all cheer. Cause Herschel has saved the town from the Hanukkah goblins. And that's the story of Herschel of Ostropol and how he saved a small village 
from all those evil Hanukkah goblins. And it's a great story. I hope you have a lovely holiday. And I hope you remember to be brave like Herschel and find times when even it's really tough to celebrate with your loved ones. Happy Hanukkah. Oh, you guys are back. Oh, now you're back. Okay. <laughs> Whoopsies. Transitions, am I right? Um, so, last we left off, our onions were frying in oil. I have pulled them out of the oil and put them into the oven to finish. Our cauliflower is still in there. Both of those need another few minutes. So while they finish, we are going to make the accouchement. Sauce, we're gonna make a sauce for it. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna do, these are for our potatoes. Uh, you can ask any of my friends, most of them are listening to the stream right now. Everyone is obsessed with the white sauce for the potatoes. So if you make it this way, you can't go wrong. It seems like a lot of garlic. It is. <laughs> Never too much garlic. But like in a really good way. So uh, what you're gonna do, uh, microplane, zester, whatever you call this, garlic. You're just gonna take it and you're gonna do this for really like one clove of garlic per like every like two tablespoons of mayo that you're gonna use. So if you're making a lot, a lot of garlic. It's like don't play, Megan. I'm mostly talking to you. You skimp. I'm just kidding. Um, so we're gonna do that. And then the next thing that makes this condiment so delicious is it has chopped cornichon pickles, which adds just like a lovely brininess to it. And then it's also gonna have uh, salt and pepper. And that's it. It's like super, super basic, but it is really addicting. Also, um, I forgot to mention this earlier, everything that I'm making tonight is actually uh, both vegan and gluten-free. So we are using vegan mayo for this dipping sauce, but if you're not vegan, you know, mayo's great. No one's mad at it. We're just not using it tonight. All right, I'm chatting too much and I'm not zesting. Um, let's see, I'm gonna talk about while I do this. Anna says that she likes a lot of garlic. Amazing, thank you, Anna. Um, thank you, oh, also huge shout out to the Waters Levy conglomerate family for watching tonight. I'm so glad you guys are here and I miss you a whole bunch. Oh, JD just showed up. He said uh, he came to the stream just for this recipe alone. Hell yes, JD. <laughs> See, you know, you know. I try and keep it on the on the DL, but I'm making it just for you guys. It's a Christmas miracle. Also, guys, I really should have pulled the skins off my garlic before we started, because now we're just watching me do this. What's the girl's name? Allison Rowan. Allison Rowan, does she not put, she doesn't pull garlic? She does not. She just throws that in. Yeah, okay, so... I get that. Let's talk about it. So there, uh, there's a woman who's streaming. Who does she work for? Uh, New, York, New York Times. Right New York Times. Now. Allison Roman, I believe. Yeah. She is like, she doesn't take the onion peels off. She doesn't take the skin off the garlic, which is like a wild choice. Not ginger either. Not ginger either. So, okay. So she here's just throws everything. She doesn't cook anything. She just throws she it She just in. throws it all in. <laughs> now, here's my thought on that. I think that's... Totally fine, because she's right. Like, honestly, everything cooks down, but that's if you're cooking it. This sauce will not receive any heat. So if you put the skins in here, they will they will feel like skin in the mouth. <laughs> and that is not a mouthfeel that we're generally looking for in a dipping sauce. But there's a, if I crack the garlic skin and shake them in a metal bowl, it comes right off. See, okay. I really appreciate you. That's fresh Pers cake. Who? Fresh cake. Fresh cake? I really appreciate you. I, I, I think I just don't do it right because every time I have tried that hack in various ways, it, nothing happens. Like maybe I don't smush it enough. That could be the situation. But, all right, this is our last one that we're gonna do. Fresh cake's actually on the stream later. Oh yeah, fresh cake is on the stream later. So if you're a fan, stick around. And if you're not a fan, also stick around because you clearly don't know what's up. All right. So we have all of our, and like, can I get a little, can I get my close-up camera right here? Like guys, we are not fucking around. You need a lot of it. It's important. So. Garlic on garlic on garlic. Garlic on garlic. Then we're just gonna put a fuck ton of pepper. Fudge ton of pepper. 
<laughs> Yo, my mom's watching. Oh no. Okay. Pepper and then our mayo. And then also we need about four or five cornichon pickles. I'm so sorry that I'm just reaching my fingers in here. But you know what? We all live here, so if I've got it, you guys have got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> So we're just gonna do um, tiny chops into discs. And then you just wanna stack all your discs. Give those little babies another chop. Cause we really want to be able to disperse a lot. Get out of here. We wanna be able to disperse a lot of pickles throughout the whole sauce. But you don't, you know, you don't really want it to be like super chunky. Now, you can also throw a pre-made relish in here if you're an absolute monster. You can also put pre-crushed garlic from those little jars in here if you are an absolute monster. But if you want it to be super tasty, this is the way we gotta go. So all those babies are just gonna go right in there. Right in there. Y'all don't have a spoon. Rachel says, hi, Blair's mom. <laughs> <laughs> hi, mom. I'm on the TV, kind of. All right. So we want about like twice the size of mayo as stuff we already have in here. So you're just going to scoop those buddies in there until it feels like it just looks really upsetting, but it's tasty, I promise, until it looks like everything has enough to be incorporated in there. Now another hack you can use for this because like with all the stirring and the mayo and all the things, um, I usually take it out of the bowl that I made it in and plate it. I don't know which camera's on. This one? Um, yes. Okay, good. Hi. Um, I, I usually pull it out of the bowl that I mixed it in and plate it in a separate bowl just so you don't have all the swirlies on the sides. But we'll talk about all of that later. All right, so we have our sauce. Now let's talk about our uh, miso uh, hummus, which is going with our crudite plate. Now, because you make it in a blender, I already mixed it up for us because it's very loud. So we're just gonna talk about what goes in there. It's two cans of chickpeas, and that's if you are making enough to keep, right? Two cans of chickpeas, two big spoonfuls of white miso paste, uh, half a lemon squeezed in there, salt and pepper, and like three cloves of garlic. Put it all in the blender. You can also use the, um, oh, what's it called? Oh, the food processor, but I have like a tiny one, so it, it was just a lot. You're gonna blitz all of that together. Be careful about how much salt you add because the miso paste already has like a really salty, like umami flavor to it. So you don't want it, you don't want it to be like over salted. So make sure you're tasting, taste it as you go. So all of that just goes in here, you blend it up. And then for the garnish, we're gonna pull this out and put it onto a bowl. And then for the garnish, olive oil, red pepper flakes, and uh, a little bit of parsley, cause that'll add color. Now we need to go check on our patats and our cauliflops. So I'm gonna go grab those. Oh guys, oh, we came to play. Look at that, wow. <laughs> Wow. All right, so as you can see, they're like nice and crispy. And I didn't add any more oil to the sheet tray because they were already pre-fried in oil, so you don't need to add any more fat. You can just ladle them out, put them right on there. And these go with the white sauce. They wanna know if you peeled the chickpeas. <laughs> Ooh, great question. It's very hot, grab one, but use, use a fork because it's hot. Um, I drained the chickpeas out of the can. I did not peel them. I just threw them all in there. Because um, honestly, I can't really tell the difference. So I wouldn't stress out about it. It's really hot, Ryan. It's really hot. I was not joking. <laughs> this is what my life actually looks like when I'm cooking, by the way. It's always someone. Um, so here we have our cauliflower. As you can see, everything is like nicely browned, we've got some crispy edges, like that's really what you're looking for. Close up cam. Here, come here bud. Ooh, hold up. That. Yeah, there Ooh. we go. Yeah. Ooh. That's right. You want it nice and roasty toasty. And again, 
This is something that at this point you have like gold. All you have to do is add whatever accoutrement you're into. Toss it with some vinegar, toss it with some uh, chili flakes, toss it with uh, a little bit of um, honey and balsamic. Like you can literally go any direction that you want with this. It's very exciting. Um, Joanna wants to know, um, are we washing the chickpeas or just draining out the liquid? Um, ooh, great question. I uh, drain out the liquid. I did, and then I just ran them under the sink in the colander for like a second. So you don't have to be like super ridiculous about it. Also, you can keep your chickpea liquid and use it as aquafaba, which is a great uh, leavening agent for any kind of like vegan baking or um, using cocktails. You can use it in cocktails instead of an egg white, which you will learn about using egg whites in cocktails later with Aaliyah, which is very exciting. So you can save all of that chickpea juice and you can use it for a lot of different things, especially if you are cooking vegan for yourself or for loved ones. So let me make sure I got all my nonsense here. We made our white sauce. We got our potatoes and our cauliflower out of the oven. We made our miso hummus for the crudite. Very exciting. The last thing that we're gonna do in this segment before we start plating everything is we are going to make a very, very, very emphasis, very simple vinaigrette that's gonna go on top of some um, greens and it's just gonna kind of be like a nice accoutrement to the table. It has something fresh. So, also guys, I'm just like really enjoying saying the word accoutrement today. So we're probably gonna hear it a couple more times, just so you know, it could be a drinking game fun for me and you. Um, so what we're gonna do is we need, what's nice about this recipe is you can literally use um, any kind of vinegar that you have. Um, I like using apple cider vinegar for this one in particular because it's just a little bit sweeter and I don't have to add any extra. It's not the right order. Don't, shh, don't watch that. So what we're gonna do is, Ryan, can you open this? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now I'm like on the spot, so if I can't open it, then it's gonna be a big deal. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. Okay, well, you didn't have to make it look that easy. Thank you, that's good. <laughs> it's nice to have help. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, probably like three, four tablespoons of that buddy in there. You basically want double the amount of oil that you have to vinegar, but you don't, it doesn't, that's only if you want it like super thick. So it doesn't have to be like all that. I like to just kind of watch it as I stream it in. So we get our salt in there, some pep for us and for the dressing. A little bit of pep. Um, we need a little bit of mustard. Um, you can use stone ground mustard, you can use Dijon mustard, you can use like champagne Dijon mustard, it doesn't really matter. The only thing is you do want to kind of use a Dijon situation because a regular mustard is still going to have that like ballpark hot dog vibe. So you don't really want that in your dressing. So we're gonna do just a little bit of Dijon in. I need my whisk. move that around a little bit and then this is my favorite part so this is us just like emulsifying our dressing this is literally the most technical part of this entire situation so if you can't do this I can't help you all you're gonna do whisk and then stream your oil straight in there vigorously whisking as you go and then check in with it. How you, you? you can say, hi, how's it going? It's going great for me. So you can tell that it's already started. I don't know if Ryan said We can tell it's already started to thicken up, right? And the biggest reason that we want to do that is so the flavors are all incorporated, but also so that everything sticks to everything that's in your salad. You don't want to like eat the salad and then like all the oil is just at the bottom because that's gross. So. La 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 la. Now, normally in this dressing, I would put chopped shallots, but mm -hmm, I have a little surprise for you guys. In the uh, oil that I fried the potatoes in, I went ahead and I just um, chopped my shallots into rings, 
pulled them out and then I just put them straight in that oil for about seven, eight minutes. And now I have crispy fried shallots. Detail that, cam. Yeah, I have crispy fried shallots that I'm gonna put in the salad instead of adding shallots to the vinaigrette. You can do either way, but I like my salads to have a little bit of texture and uh, Santa does too, so it's important. All right, great. So we have our dressing. The we also have visitors. we also have visitors. Oh my god, who could it be? No, I we really don't know who it is. My dog <laughs> will start to bark any minute now, but she's cute, so just let it happen. So we have our dressing. Also, I need to work on working cleaner. That's one of my goals for 2021. Um, we will come back in just a few minutes and we're going to do basically plating all the things that we have set up and made for ourselves and going through all of the vegetables that we're going to put out in our crudite plate. We're also going to talk about how to uh, compose our charcuterie board. Um, it is vegan, so we're not doing any um, meats. It's mostly going to be vegan cheeses and fruit and like spreads and crackers. So when we come back, we will be all set up for that. All right. Kisses. See you in a bit. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. That looks delicious. Thank you very much, Blair. As always, um, that's not the last we'll see of her. So um, make sure you stay tuned and we will continue to get some nom noms uh, ready for you. But um, in the meantime, we're. Again? Hey, hey man. I know um, there's no time. But... I just want to show you that there's like some raccoons eating trash. And then, you know, there's some, uh, there's some guys back here who are leaving, like, a little gig that they had. Um, these people just had a wonderful night out at the museum, which, um, you know, you remember that. Um, yes, I remember that movie. movie. It was, uh, you know, it was the good one. The first one, um, not the second one, because uh, I, don't, I don't even know if anyone saw the second one. I didn't see the second one. Anyways, I just, okay. you know, but, there's but, a couple. But, but Dylan, um, Dylan, Dylan? Okay. I understand. You don't have time. No, no, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I'm sorry. It looks great. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Looks great. All right. Moving on. I don't think that could be. Oh, I don't think we're expecting anyone. What mask. I mean, it's 2020. How do we know that Rudolph is a he? What if right. he is actually a they? We haven't asked him his pronouns. That's right. And what if they are yeah, tired of leading longer. the pack? It must be exhausting. What if they want to break and just want to get in the no. back of the pack for that, once? You know what I mean? Probably. probably. Hey! Happy holidays! What's up, friends? Oh, yeah. We heard that you were running low on coffee. I don't know how it's It's long enough, and also I can do cuts because I can you zoom into them and then zoom in back out of this. Okay, so. That works. Cool. Thank you so much. Let's get started. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I. Oh, which which microphone are we using? You can hear me, right? Yes, you can hear me. Okay. Oh, wait, do you do um, so so funnily enough, our our doorbell actually did ring um, before we had that whole segment. We're unsure. Um, <laughs> so so that was actually kind of brilliant planning. Um, we were gonna do like a, a fake doorbell, but then it actually had a real doorbell going on. So um, so there's that. Um, but Brian, Mike, oh, the, the mic's on. The mic is still on? Yes, it's starting. Oh. We're all up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Over in the I, hope, I hope, I definitely hope that the mic is on. Thank goodness the mic is on. <laughs> um, he was doing then, that as a mime. Uh, I just want to take a second because we actually got um, a, 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 a present from, from Two Senseless um, who also stopped by and, uh, and, and, and gave me something. Um, it, I don't necessarily know what it is. I think it looks it, it looks enticing. It looks festive, um, but uh, you know she normally draws really cute things. So um, oh, what is happening? Why is someone actually here? Okay, all right. I'm actually what? It's actually kind of strange that someone's here. Do you know the person? Who is it? Imagine. Sorry. Packages? I don't have any of packages. Packages? We have all the packages. I ordered so much stuff for this. <laughs> but I don't do packages anymore. Who was it? See, this is where I could... Just open the door. This you is... Open the door. It's fine. It's all right. No? Let the people Whoa. see. Oh. Let them see. 
Is it an unboxing? Someone sent us a special Don't gift. Sing. Don't make me sing. That's when it turns into a horror movie. It's Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh my god, <laughs> thank god. It's a Abercrombie and Fitch. Yes, <laughs> I got high-waisted oh, black jeans. Six hops, says Robert. <laughs> um, that but was... yeah, no, so um, we got this. <gasps> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh my god. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> That's so scary. <laughs> Make sure you follow Two Senseless uh, here on the, the hand. The, the, the first four chords. I'm just going to watch like this. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and without further ado, though, we're going to go and we're going to pass it off um, to the band that you guys have still not named, even though it's up to you guys. Were there any yeah. good ones? Um, we weren't we so have, into, yeah. wasn't there like a chemical There were a couple ones. Yeah. yeah. There was the Jingle Ballers uh, <laughs> from uh, Ryan and Maxine. <laughs> Shout out to them, my sister and her boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. They're like, we're not giving you any ideas until you go broadcast. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, they need the 50 on. grand Ven mode. ASAP. I see. Well, I right. don't right. However. So I am from Australia, and Jill is from England, and this song, we won't be going home for Christmas this year, and this song goes out to everyone who's feeling a little bit homesick. Right before, um, oh. feeling the holiday spirit. 
Dave's asking when he walks Christmas into. joy, Christmas oh, joy, Christmas, yeah, Christmas no, joy. Uh, I was wondering. Aww. Joy, joy, um, joy, joy. All right. Joy. So then next up, we have our first um, Aaliyah cocktail, I believe. Right? 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 I can check the list for you. Yes, I believe check so. His list. <laughs> check it twice. Enjoy your cocktail! Hey, hey, hey. Let's make a holiday gin fizz. So, I don't know if that's what it's called. That's what I made up. For this, you can use gin or vodka, whichever you prefer. Gin would go better, but if you like vodka, hey, that's your business. All right, let's go. So, first thing is first, we are going to get out our jigger, and we are going to measure out two ounces of gin or vodka. There we go. Boom. Splash that right in on your mixing glass. Next up, some freshly squeezed OJ. Now, you don't have to freshly squeeze it if you don't want to. You can buy it in the store if you're not feeling bougie, but I will say your drink will be much sweeter with store-bought OJ. All right, next up, we're gonna do another ounce of pomegranate juice. Again, who has pomegranate juice? You can use cranberry juice if that's what you have. So an ounce of OJ, an ounce of your juice of choice. We're gonna toss some ice in that and let's get to shaking. Shake, 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 shake. Get that tin real nice and cold. Once it's really cold, almost too cold to the touch, you know it's ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna get our fresh glass, preferably a holiday glass. Get your strainer. You're gonna strain that right in. Add some fresh ice. Mm, mm, mm. And top with a little bit of seltzer water. Now, if you don't have seltzer water, or if you want it to be a little sweeter, go for the ginger ale, but I stick with seltzer. Mm-hmm, little bubbly, merry and brat. And then we're gonna top it with some pomegranate seeds because, hello, it's the holiday. Boom, boom, boom. And then garnish her with an orange slice. Beautiful. Enjoy. guys welcome back to my little craft corner um i hope you had fun the last time with the paper segment this segment's all about stringing popcorn and making garland so i'm gonna start with the popcorn because it's way more simple um the hardest part honestly is just putting the needle through the thread so what you'll need you'll need a needle a thread some popped popcorn you shouldn't use microwaved popcorn it'll be buttery and messy and gross you should really just buy the popcorn kernels at the grocery store um, and then put it in a popcorn popper. We don't have one, so I just put it in a pot with a little bit of canola oil with a lid, and then you just let it pop. It's really good. They're really good. They're like, oh, they're so good. Oh, quick tangent. Do you want to see? I always do this in front of Ryan, and he doesn't like it. But do you want to see how a dog eats popcorn? You put it in your hand, and you just do this. <laughs> wow. I have one going right now. I also really like to, you know, because it's a lot of white. You can see it on the tree. It looks really nice against the Christmas tree. But I like to disperse them with a little bit of cranberries. So I have a little thing of cranberries here as well. You don't need to dry them or anything. You can just buy them at the grocery store as is in the bag. And you can just thread them through. I like to actually start my threaded popcorn with a cranberry because it works really well like an anchor you can't really tie a knot around a piece of popcorn as easily so that's just a little trick as well so it's just super simple you have a needle thread gonna string a cranberry like so bada bing bada boom watch it go watch it go it's not going there it goes um 
Yeah. I just want to point out that uh, the second that you did the dog thing, my dad was like, hi, Aaron. Oh, <laughs> that's great. That makes me so happy. Hi, Don. I'm glad. Have I done that bit for your parents? If I, I haven't, know. I have now. Yeah, yeah now, now I'm getting yeah. you and everybody else. Um, so yeah, and then I like to string them just, you know, in segments of three because it's a lot, it goes a lot, a lot quicker. Um, and this is another perfect, even if not more perfect, craft to do while you're watching a Christmas movie because you have popcorn right in front of you. You can just eat it because it's really good. Um, you can just eat it as you go, which is great. I'm not going to finish this because it's going to take a long time. But, as you can see, I really have it going there. Hi, Ryan. Oh, do you want great. some popcorn? Yeah. Do you want to eat it from the stand? Yeah, I ripped it. You shouldn't do this. This isn't how... Oh, he didn't do it. I really thought he was going to. Um, so, that's a very simple craft you can do. Really, really affordable. Do you want to do the, the really detail nice. cam? Yeah. Oh, here's right, a detail I cam. Switch. I have to walk back over here to switch your detail cam. Here's a detail. One second. Yeah, nice job, on. Wow, look at that detail. Also, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what the difficulty level is listed Two for Jingle Bells. Bells. Okay, the Jingle Bell scale was something I thought of late at night when Ryan was like, babe, you need to make up your crafts list. And I was like half asleep. To be honest, that's what happened and I thought it'd be a cute thing. But it's two Jingle Bells because it's pretty simple to do. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the garlands. Um, How many Jingle Bells is law school? Oh, too many. <laughs> too Four. many. Four. <laughs> um, so, next I am going to make a garland for you. I actually have worked in a bunch of floral shops here in New York City. It's very easy. Don't get, you know, intimidated by making your homemade garland with tree trimmings. It's actually a lot more simple than you think. So, as you can see here, I just have a lot of tree trimmings from the Christmas tree. I also went to, you know, they have them in front of bodegas if you don't live in New York City. and they have tree trimming and cutting and pretty greens at the grocery store. You can also, you know, walk around, <laughs> clip some holly, clip some pine in the woods. Don't do it in a national park because that's illegal. But if you want to do it in a public park and you don't trim too much and it doesn't hurt the tree, by all means. So here is how I started it. You really don't want to use thread or, you know, ribbon or anything you want to use a nice sturdy twine while you're making your garland because you're working with kind of stiffer material so you want it to be able to hold up so what i did to start it i just tied a knot around one of the tree sprigs and then you kind of just wrap it around and that's pretty much it i like to add in a couple knots as well um just because it makes it a little bit more sturdy but i'm just going to make a little garland for you and show you how can i actually get the um the more detailed camera, just so I can show it. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so as you can see, I wrapped it around and just tied another knot. Then you're just gonna lay it on top of the other, and then again, wrap it around. This is a super nice way to have, you know, some people just throw away their tree trimmings if you trim your tree and you get a real Christmas tree. This is a way to incorporate your Christmas tree in more aspects of the house. And it smells great. So yeah, so I tied another knot. I'm just gonna wrap it around. And I think I also listed in the materials Christmas cutesies for things you need for the garland. Um, Christmas cutesies is kind of to your own discretion. Um, you are welcome to use candy canes. I'm gonna use candy canes. You're welcome to use um, dried oranges. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that a little bit later. Um, ornaments are great, little ornaments hanging from it. It's really, really great. You can also do, um, what a, what's another Christmas cutesy? Anything your heart desires. Bows, ribbons, I don't know, Jenga pieces. Jenga pieces? I don't know. Maybe Scrabble pieces? Scrabble pieces if you're really gamey. Gamey? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, like Anchovies. Yeah, what are, name yeah. out Christmas cutesies, guys. Leave it in the comments. And don't be... Surprised. Peyton so says yeah. This is a great sweater. Oh, thank you. It's Ryan's. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I just want to point that out. So, oh, pine cones is another great Christmas cutesy that you can find in the woods. Um, so yeah. So we are just doing the. Right now, this is more like the skeleton. It's not going to look this crazy. Um, also, I don't like how this goes, but we'll fix that in a little bit. So yeah, this is a really. Don't get intimidated by this because it's really not as much as you think. It's more just like making sure it's sturdy and intertwining it. So I have a pretty good base here. I'm going to wrap this around one more time. Just so 
it's sturdy enough to hang. And I have a hook here. It's gonna hang down lengthwise, but it will still give the effect of a nice garland. It's also nice to hang it horizontally over doorways, over your mantle, anything like that. So we're gonna hang it. And so this is the part, oh, is it, did I, is that hold it? oh my gosh, see, this is why we do live streams. <laughs> if this was pre-recorded, that would have been edited out. We all can't tell a wonderful, beautiful recorded story of Jewish goblins. <laughs> we gotta do this in real time, people. So, so you see how you don't really wanna see the twine? So I'm just gonna tuck that in like so. And you kind of just wrap it around. And you cut to the wide. Do you see it? Can you see the wide? Yeah. So, and this is actually boxwood. This isn't an evergreen, but it looks really nice with the garland. And it was in the kit I bought from the bodega. So it looks nice. See, we can add this to make it look nice and fuller. Really nice. These little sprigs are really useful too when you want to fill it out more. You can just do it something like that. Another sprig. Let's add it. I don't like this, so I'm just gonna put it in right there. Perfect. And then also, you can totally, oh, it got tangled, but you can totally put strung popcorn on a garland too. Don't let him feel left out, you know? Look at how nicely that looks. I mean, if it was a full strand, it would be good, but we just don't have the time. I don't have the time. Let's add a pine cone. Is a is 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 pine Lovely. cone a Christmas pizza? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you need to listen. I went into that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> you have ears. You I also have ornaments here. Really, really cute. Hang them from the garland. See, it's the Christmas cutesies that really, really add it. Oh, that pine cone's not tied in. But we can see. It's not cute enough. It's rejecting it. If I had more time to do this, this is realistically going to take you like 30 to 40 minutes. But it's going to be worth it because it will look amazing. You want to make sure it's secure. But this one. It's got a rustic charm to it, I think. So it's definitely coming along. I would add more to it if I had a little bit more time. See, it's a little falling apart, but it's rush. falling apart, but it's got yeah, a lot of heart. Time. Yeah. Time. If you want to do more, more of it. Okay. No, I think I'll just do it in the segment and I can show you guys the finished, the finished one. Okay. So keep working on your garlands, guys. Um, I think I gave you guys a rough idea of how to do it. And yeah. Leave your suggestions in the comments. Leave your suggestions in the comments. Merry Christmas! Well. My drink is up. You'll be back again soon, though. Mm -hmm. so. I'm still coming at you. Woo! Take a classic cocktail and make it more festive. So here we go with our smoked maple old fashioned. Now, to get that smoky flavor, you're gonna wanna take some rosemary and just pinch a bit off and burn that bad boy. Just scorch it right on up. You're gonna take your rocks glass and put that over it and just put it to the side and let it do its thing. Now, for this, we're gonna use maple syrup as the sweetener because it's way more festive and it's gonna give it that nice kind of holiday, warm, cozy vibes in your mouth. So we're gonna do about half an ounce of maple syrup. Put that into your glass. And next up, we're gonna move on to the booze. Now my booze of choice here in my booze bottle is Basil Hayden's Bourbon Whiskey, but you can use whatever suits you. And you're gonna to wanna to do two and a half ounces of your booze of choice. Splash it on in there. Now we're gonna flip our jigger and get another half ounce. Mm -mm -mm. All right, here we go, get it in, get it in. Boom. All right, next up is your bitters. You're gonna take some bitters and just give maybe three little splashes in there. Boom, boom, boom. Gonna take some ice, which I have in this bowl here. And for old fashions, you do not shake, you stir. Just so stir, 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 stir. And once that glass is nice and cold, you know you've done the job. More stirring, more stirring. All right, here we go. Now we're going to get our strainer, which clearly I have forgotten somewhere in the kitchen. Ah, here we go. Get your strainer. Add some fresh ice into your glass. Fresh ice, boom. Strain your maple old fashioned into that smoky glass. 
oh it's already so beautiful and then you are going to garnish that with an orange peel And of course, some rosemary. Mm. Enjoy. All right, believe it or not, we were like halfway through the night. Um, we're having a really good time. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff already uh, behind us, but we got even better things in front of us. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, but um, are you kidding me? What? I know, I know, I know. Um, but I didn't. Um, the waterfront here is kind of like all new this year. Okay. Um, so this boat, you know, is hanging out. There's, you know, a factory going on. We got the lighthouse. Um, this lady has some lobsters. Uh, I wonder what she's gonna do with that later. Um, I don't mean that in a weird way. I kind of said that where it sounded like it was a weird way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a cottage up here. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, I thought, you know, there's, you know. Dylan, I just, I, I just, I, we really don't have time. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I mean, obviously I work with them all the time. It's great. But just next year, we, I promise we'll have time for the whole Christmas village. But just not, not, not this year. We already have too much. But we have, we have Santa coming along. We have. Uh, we have some more cocktails. We have um, so many great things. So stay tuned. Um, I'm going to try to get this under wraps. Um, on to the next thing. Alright. And we're alive. You're up. Oh, you guys are back. Oh, that's right. We needed to come back. Because right now, all we have is a table full of random stuff. And that's not, that's not what we want. We want something that we can present to everyone. So, let me talk you through what I've been doing since you left. Um, we have our dipping sauce for our potatoes. Now, I'm not going to lie. For this particular batch of potatoes, I do have a, a secret weapon that unfortunately I can't share with you because I don't know what it is. Uh, my best friend Suhaila's father spent years trying to come up with the perfect spice blend. Um, she tells an amazing story about it in her one woman show called uh, Hi, My First Name is Suhaila. And so I have that with me. I honestly don't know what's in here other than just like crack. Like it's so tasty. But that doesn't mean that you can't just put salt on these because to be honest, the dipping sauce is very flavorful. So don't be stressed. So we've got our potatoes. We've got our dipping sauce. We also have our hummus, which I just garnished with some red pepper flakes and some parsley. Cause like I said before, it's very acidic, very salty, very umami. So it needs a little bit of spice and a little bit of brightness on top and then we're just going to finish it with a little drizzle of olive oil so there's a nice um just a nice mouth feel which is a which is a phrase that i hate but <laughs> it's it's very important because you you do want someone to bite into your food and, and feel that like unctuousness on their uh palate and not you know trash so <laughs> Um, I have my big bowl of greens. These are just uh, Mizuna greens, which is a Japanese kind of like arugula-esque situation, but spinach, arugula, romaine, like whatever you're into, this is kind of just like an all-purpose tasty salad situation. So what we're gonna do is we'll take our dressing. We're just gonna toss all of that on there. And the reason that we're tossing our dressing with just the greens is because we're going to be topping it with crunchy bits. We don't really want those to get, uh, like, we just don't want them to get wet. We want them to stay crunchy. So we have our greens. Um, I just had some edamame in the fridge, so we're going to put that in there. Um, I have some chopped tomatoes that we got for our crudite list. But I figure, like, if you have them, why not use them in multiple places, multiple ways? So these ones are quartered. Um, and then 
We're gonna do just a little bit of pomegranate because I didn't add any sweetener to our dressing. If you're not putting sweetness in somewhere else, then you might wanna add like a little bit of honey or a little bit of sugar to your basic dressing just to kind of like help balance out all those flavors. But since it's Christmas, and you're like, Blair, pomegranates and tomatoes, that's weird. Um, actually, the I find that the sweetness from the tomatoes and the sweetness from the pomegranates goes really well with the acidity in the dressing, so you can suck it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I am also, I am allergic to gluten, so um, normally I would make uh, croutons, but we were gonna do crostinis for our, crudite, for our uh, charcuterie plate. So what I did is I have some walnuts here, and all I did, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I used uh, Trader Joe's makes this delicious nonsense. It's just called Chili Onion Crunch. All it is is dried chili, dried onions, dried garlic, and oil mixed together. But since they've been sitting together for a long time, the oil is delicious. So I just uh, put the walnuts in a dry pan. I let them get toasty. And then I add this to it at the last minute with a little bit of honey and just stir it all together. If you leave it in there too long, the crunch will burn very quickly. So we're gonna take our crunchy walnuts. We're gonna throw those buddies on there. Ooh, fuck. Hell yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'm gonna steal some of those back because I'm gonna put it on the um, charcuterie board too. And then we're gonna take, remember these guys? These crunchy shallots? Oh, I remember those. I know. We're gonna take those guys and we're gonna put those on top too. Now, the biggest thing about this, since our dressing is already in the lettuce and we're doing this for our get together, we are not gonna toss it until it is ready to be served. So we're just gonna leave it, like get a little close up. We're just gonna leave it with all of the goodness on top of the greens with the dressing inside and then we will give it a good toss at the very end. So here's our salad. I am actually, you know what? It's just everybody has been working so hard and they've just been doing such a lovely job that I think we might need a snack break. So I'm actually gonna we're not gonna see this again. So take a little peeky. I'm gonna give this to Zach to, uh, nope, I'm gonna give this to Rico <laughs> for anybody who's hungry. Yes, you need some plates. Yeah. Uh, we get some forks. There you are, darlings. All right, to the green room. To the green room with that. Get out of here. More like the salad room. <laughs> I know, also because I need more space on my table to talk you guys through the next thing that we're gonna do. Ugh. All right, so, boom. We've got our salad, we've got our roasty toasty nonsense, we have our uh, miso hummus. Now with the miso hummus, we are going to need our um, crudite situation. So for that, I basically have put together all of the crunchy vegetables that I love. Like I said before, the miso paste is it has a lot of flavor to it. It's very creamy, very umami. So what we want is a lot of freshness to go with that. So I have some endive here. All I did is I cut off the ends. I cut them into little spears because I feel like that's the best thing for like get, dipping, getting in there. So all we're gonna do is we're just, basically right now, mainly because I didn't practice this, we're just gonna see how everything looks. The easiest way to make it look nice without trying super hard is to give things height and have color. So for example, instead of regular carrots, I got rainbow carrots. And then I also have my um, rainbow cauliflower from earlier that I'm gonna add to our plate. It's, a, it's an easy way to get wow factor without trying very hard. The other thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna put our dip right in the middle so everyone knows that that's what it is for. Um, for carrots, you can chop them into just discs, but I like to do them on an angle because I find that um, it looks a little bit nicer. Whoop! And you can toss them like a frisbee. No, it looks a bit nicer, and you can really get like a good like tocito scoop situation in there, and that's what we want. We, if we're gonna, if you're gonna make a good dipping sauce, you want people to be able to get a whole bunch on there. Right, so we're just gonna take these. We'll 
cut them all the way down. Take these buds. We're just gonna put them. Salad room sounds like a band name. No. Salad room should be the band name. That's from idea. Jordan Carrier. That's Hi, Jordan. Salad room. Salad fingers says Bradley. You guys are good. Wow. That's what we like to hear. That's honestly like my favorite sound is like the the silence that comes when people are eating something really delicious. Especially if there was like a whole bunch of hubbub and then food hits the plate and everyone is just like, mmm. That's what I love. That's my favorite sound in the whole world. Silence. The silence. <laughs> I was a teacher for quite some time, so uh, yeah. The silence. All right. So we're gonna put these guys on here. And again, the other thing that I like about working with color is you don't have to super stress out about plating your, you just don't have to stress out about it because the beauty comes from the color of the vegetables. So we'll do these guys quickly on an angle. Watch your fingies if you coming in here. We'll put those guys on there. So we've got our endive. We've got our carrots. To be honest, this is a little mo bit more endive than I would put if I was like trying to like make it look super, you know, for a photo. But I'm just trying to feed people right now. So we're just gonna put our broccoli. We're gonna put our Romanesco and purple cauliflower on there. Again, the biggest thing, bite-sized pieces in scoopable situations. So like whatever it is that you're using, you just wanna make sure that people can get to it. We're gonna put some tomatoes on there. This isn't a very tomato friendly dipping sauce, but it's they're really good together, so I'm just gonna put them on there anyway. I've got some snap peas. And again, the thing that I love so much about this is if you know how to make a good sauce, you can literally pull like all the extra vegetables that you have from your meal prepping, whatever random stuff you have in your fridge, you, you can literally just cut it up nicely and put it all on a board with a good dipping sauce and everyone will eat it. Um, that way you don't, you know, you can also, what I was teaching, this was something I would love to have for lunch when we were doing uh, teaching from home, is I would literally just make a crudite plate or a charcuterie board. And that would be what I have to watch. And it seems really fancy, but it's actually just plated vegetables. So, we have all of our, let's see, all right. Now, in the close-up cam, we have broccoli and rainbow cauliflower endive. We have our rainbow um, bell peppers. We have, thank you, Santa. We have our snap peas and we have our rainbow carrots and we have our dipping sauce. Again, like it's all thrown on there, but in my opinion, if you have the right colors and it's easily accessible for people to actually eat, that's the most important thing. There's nothing worse than ending up with just like a plate of vegetables two hours later that no one has touched. No one wants that. All right, so now that we have this. Coming. Thank you. <laughs> Come Amazing. Claim your food. Yeah, feel free to nibble you on can, that. You can eat this now? You can eat that. <laughs> More like you a rap a pom yum. Oh. Should we take the potato? Rap a pom yum. And now my last yum. segment is really just essentially the same thing, but we're going to talk about cheeses. Now, I said this was a vegan situation before, so you're like, where are cheese? What the hell? Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> You just cursed for the tenth time during this event. I think I'm going to have to give call instead of this gift. Blah. I mean, that's fine, but that does mean that you cannot have any of the crudite. What? Yeah, if you give me coal, you can't have crudite. That's not cool. I'm, also I'm just doing my job. I'm yeah. also going to teach you not to, 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 to threaten the, the hosts uh, on, on the show, Santa. I'm yeah. sorry. Wait. Santa was a little naughty. Don't, oh. Santa's I, been bad. Oh, my God. That's okay, Santa. Santa's been real bad. 
Hey, uh, what are you doing after this? Santa! Oh, come oh, on! <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, it's okay, guys. Me and Santa are actually engaged, so it's fine. <laughs> all right. Oh, I'm all flustered now. Okay. Cheese plate. So, if you uh, live in the uh, New York area, New York City area, there is an amazing vegan cheese shop called Rivendell. It used to be in Brooklyn, uh, but they just opened uh, a situation in Essex Market. So that is where I've gone to get all of my vegan cheeses. They also deliver everywhere. So if you go on their uh, situation, um, they use like Mercado or some nonsense, but you can get this delivered anywhere across the country. So I felt like that was relevant. Uh, basically when you're putting together a cheese plate, vegan or not vegan, you just want to make sure you have a wide variety of things. So I have a blue cheese, I have a sweeter, uh, soft cheese, I have a spicy pimento, no, <laughs> I have a spicy hard cheese and I have like a briny soft cheese. So we just want to make sure that we're kind of like covering the whole scope of flavors. Now, when I'm putting plates together, in fact, before I even open this, I kind of just like to see like what the situation is gonna look like. And not necessarily look like, like how easy is it going to be for people to actually get in here and like get down. So since I've got two smaller boards for this one, because I only have one big board, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put our sweet cheese and we're going to put our spicy cheese next to each other and we're going to do our blue cheese and our um this is essentially like a pimento goat cheese so like very tangy very briny so we put those together um and then the next thing we're going to do is just add all of our dressings so i'm just going to unwrap these guys so you can see what they look like um all four of these cheeses are made out of cashews but you can also get vegan cheese that's made with soy um I just think that cashew has the best texture out of all of the options. So we've got our sweet cheese. We've got our spicy cheddar situation. A little, a little sharp help. You guys probably can't hear this, but all I hear is like the clicking of forks. Just saying, that's what you're looking for. Ooh, so this is our like pimento walnut goat cheese situation. It's gonna go next to our blue cheese. If I can get in here. What's cool about this is they, they take the cashews through the same processes that they take the dairy through in order to create the, the fungus and the funk and the taste. So these cheeses actually have like real rinds to them, which I think is really cool. It also adds to just the look of it. All right. So we're gonna do that. Now, we need stuff. If anybody has ever watched a video on YouTube about creating a cheese plate, you have heard the grape trick. Where essentially, you just take your grapes, that's not a very cute section. But you use them to corner everything. So what that does is A, grapes are delicious, but also it kind of like frames in the picture that you're creating with your board. So we're just gonna bring that in. Great. And now, as you can see, a lot of our space is already dealt with. We're gonna add in some of those tasty spicy nuts that I put in the salad next to our nutty cheese. We're gonna take this guy, wipe him out. We're gonna add our pomegranate seeds on there. And then I have gluten-free crackers. I suggest getting one kind of cracker that is plain and one kind of cracker that is salted just because you we've already got a lot of flavor profiles going on here so you don't want to go like if you're having different types of cheese you don't want to only get like a garlic cracker because you know then you're just going to taste that so all we're going to do with these guys 
I'm just going to put it right here in the center. I'm going to make sure I'm not like manhandling everything. And I just like to put the crackers in a space where they're not going to fall off when I'm moving the tray. If you want to put them on the edge or whatever, you follow your dreams. Not a big deal. Okay, so we have our cheese. We have our fruit. I also got... For the spicy sweet situation, I also have some raspberries. And because it's Christmas, it's Christmas, I have some cherries. So we're just gonna kind of sneak those guys into where our grapes are. Now we wanna make sure that we're not like covering up our cheese as well, but we can just use that to kind of like incorporate everything. Now, the next thing that I would do is we have a lot of sweet situations happening right now. So we're gonna go back to Someone pointed out that you didn't have any nuts, and I was like, peanut allergy, lol. Yeah, peanut <laughs> allergy. But also I do have spiced walnuts here from the salad, so it's like awkward for you. Um <laughs> picking fights with the chat. No, I would never. Please don't fight me. <laughs> <laughs> just don't bring peanuts to the fight. Oh my god, please oh my don't. God, Ryan. Oh my god, you guys, this is so awkward. I only have three Cornish on left. Oh, whoop. That's all right. Now we wing it. What else does she have? I should have put on like a little border with fire that was shaking. It's like, wing it, Mo! <laughs> oh, y'all. I know what I forgot. Okay. I know what I forgot. Gluten-free baguettes. Uh, this is a great brand uh, if you are gluten-free and need to uh, work it like this. I don't have time to do it on the stream. We're not going to watch me do it because it takes like 10 minutes. All you're going to do, preheat the oven to 400. Um, the same cuts that we did with the carrots on the bias. You're going to cut your baguette. You're going to olive oil, salt and pepper, uh, garlic, and you can either do garlic powder if that's all you have. You have fresh garlic, you can cut it in half and rub it onto the cut part into the oven at like 400 for about five minutes. And then I would flip them because um, gluten-free bread tends to be a little bit more mealy. So you really want it to be, get crusty all the way through. The crostinis are always a huge hit. So, crostinis, check. Oh, y'all, how are they gonna eat the cheese if I don't put any forks in there? So, I'm getting married this year, so I already got a couple wedding gifts, so we've got some pretty fancy cheese paddles of up in this piece. Um, if you don't, whatever you have. It, it literally doesn't matter. The goal is, is that people will eat it because there's something to serve it with. So don't stress. Like, for example, I don't have a sharp enough knife for the blue cheese. We're just going to stick that buddy in there. Great. So we have our cheese, we have our fruits, we have our crackers. I would also put out a couple jams. You can put a mustard out there. If you do like things to be a little bit more on the safer situation, stone ground mustard is always great. Pickles, olives, basically whatever snicky snack you are into, all you have to do is put it on a board, frame it in something, and make sure that everyone has a knife that they can use to eat it with. And then you've nailed it absolutely nailed it so we have our charcuterie boards we have our crudite we have our potatoes we have our dipping sauce and uh now uh we're gonna eat which i am very excited about so thank you guys so much if you have any questions you can still drop them in the comments and i can let you know what the answers are um also i love you also merry christmas Hey, what's up, Ryan and friends? Fresh Cake here wishing you a very happy holiday. Thank you so much for having me here on the stream. I wore my best sweater. Well, by best, I mean worst. It's a go.
and he's drinking things and partying and having a good time just like we are here right now and uh because it's the holiday season i kind of wanted to you know get you a gift but i wasn't sure what to get you so i figured yeah, i'm an artist might as well i make something so i made a very special illustration just for you guys and this stream no one has seen it yet this is the first time it's of an elf with a goofy face the kind of face i'd imagine someone would make like the first time they drink i don't know eggnog you know something that's like a big tall glass of boogers super gross uh i actually like eggnog but you know some people don't it's not for everybody i get it so i hope you all enjoy the time lapse and of course like i was saying happy holidays everybody please stay safe stay healthy and of course stay fresh later Hi guys, welcome back to the Craft Corner. Um, so let me tell you about what happened this Christmas. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture of a dried orange and my life has been changed for Christmas crafting. This Christmas to me, don't give me your mistletoe, don't give me your holly, don't give me your great aunt Marge's fruitcake, only give me dried oranges. I love them, they're my favorite new craft. Not gonna lie, they take a lot of time. That's why they have the highest Jingle Bell difficulty. They are five Jingle Bells. Not because it's so much like very involved, it just takes a lot of, t of your time. Um, and it's not like you're gonna be really actively doing the craft the entire time. It's more that you're gonna be monitoring it like a turkey. Think of it as a turkey, a Christmas Eve dried orange turkey. So what you need, you need an orange, obviously. I'm going to be using a dehydrator, but you can also use it in the oven. I was actually at my parents' house and I dried a bunch of oranges for them and I only used the oven. So you can preheat your oven to 200 to 250 degrees. Take your orange slices and then put them on a pan with some salt to drag out the liquid and then put them in the oven for three to five hours. That's where it varies. It depends on how strong your oven is. It depends on how close you're watching them how dry it is in the air it takes a lot of time but the result is beautiful you can see they're strong on the tree here i love them so what you need you need an orange you need a knife you need a cutting board you need holly jolly spirit you need um patience but it the result is lovely so yeah so you're just gonna cut thinly the oranges into a bunch of slices um really try to get them as thin as you can i know it's scary um, even if you have a mandolin, a mandolin would work great for this. I don't like mandolins because I'm terrified of chopping all my fingertips off. But if you have one and you feel, you know, strong in your mandolin um, skills, go for it. Go all for it. My brother has a mandolin and he really screwed up his fingers once. So now he wears just a really shiny thick glove while he does it and he looks like Michael Jackson so he calls it his Michael Jackson oh this is the wrong kind of mandolin thank you Rico <laughs> but <laughs> if you don't know what a mandolin is it's um an instrument do you want to play a note rub the orange on it no I'm not going to do that that looks expensive and I don't want to have to get Rico another mandolin for Christmas um but also <laughs> I'm glad I came up with it again when I was very half asleep um a mandolin is like a long cutting board, but it's on a tilt on an axis and it has a razor blade in it. So you can just rub the orange like this and chop it off. But then when you get close to it, your fingertips can get cut off. So I just like to Which use I a knife. Done. It's horrible. Also, yes, thank you, Blair. It's awful. Yeah, it's not also, fun. you see, this is a huge, huge slice because I wasn't, I was too into the mandolin talk that I wasn't paying attention. This will take about six hours plus to dry out. 
So this though will take about three hours, depending on your temperature, depending on your oven, depending if you have a dehydrator. So yeah, wants to know how many oranges are on the tree. Oh, how many? So I bought them there at the grocery store, five for five bucks. And I went to the grocery store four times. So you tell me how many oranges I have. That's throwing in some Christmas math. Don't you love that? Actually, you do do, I feel like you do, <laughs> do do. I feel like you do do some math during the holidays. It's like, okay, well, if I put the turkey in at like 2 p.m. and it cooks, blah, 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 you know, like, or like your goose or your something. Okay, so oranges are sliced. Your goose. <laughs> what? So this is this wonderful, ooh, that is the dehydrator <laughs> lid that just slipped off. This is the dehydrator. It's great. It's like a little basket that sucks out all the moisture out of it, but not all the fun. So, so if we're gonna go to the second cam, actually, I'm just gonna lay them out on my dehydrator like so. D is it on the second? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. So, yeah, I'm just gonna lay them out like so. There are actually more tiers, but I only put two. If you run out of room on your dehydrator, you can't just overlap them like this. Yeah. So then we tucked them in. Put him to sleep. I'm not gonna lie, um, I don't have 10 hours on this stream to do, so I pre-dried some oranges for you. Um, yeah, so uh, here is what the end product looks like. Oh, here's what the end product looks like. Um, it's like a little orange wafer. They get this really deep amber color, which I really think is really beautiful, and you can see them glow through the lights, the white lights of the Christmas tree, so I think they're very pretty. You can go to the next camera. I don't need that. But you put, you put the, uh, the oranges in the oven. Oh, that's right. Okay, so right? thank you. So I did overachieve because I wanted mine to look really good. Um, so I put them in and out of the oven to the dehydrator. Um, some didn't work out as well. As you can see, this one's quite burned. But some, you got that if you have the time and the willpower and nothing to do on a Sunday, you totally can go in and out. If you have a dehydrator, you have an oven, set your oven for 200 degrees, pop them in for a little bit, then pop them in the dehydrator, then pop them back in, you'll get this beautiful golden brown, but you don't have to do that. I just did that because I'm crazy. Um, so now that we have our dried oranges, we're gonna garland them. We're gonna make them a beautiful string so you can do that. I already have a starter one, what I did. I don't have a thick embroidery needle. My mom did when I was at their house and I was doing this for them. But what I did instead, I just took a toothpick and tape and wrapped the tape around the string and the toothpick and then you have a thick needle. Perfect, ingenious. Um, the string I'm using is a bit sturdier than thread that you'd use for sewing. It's embroidery string. Um, if I was a summer camp counselor, this is the string you use to make friendship bracelets. If you got it lying around, they have it at Michael's, they have it at any craft store. Um, I love a craft store. I think everyone loves a craft store. And if you don't, you're lacking enthusiasm and compassion. compassion. Okay. Thank you. And pep. Um, one time, fun story, one time my mom told me, she's like, oh, we're just gonna rush in to Joanne Fabrics for 15 minutes and then we'll go to Burger King. You're in that Joanne Fabrics for two and a half hours. <laughs> That's just what happens. Crafts yeah. overcomes you. Also, I'm going on a tangent on my mother. We were cleaning up the storage room and she has a whole shelf of crafting and we were like, what should we take off this shelf? And she was like, the craft shelf, nothing goes. So not far from the tree, this <laughs> apple. Um, so anyway. Oh, oh wait, sorry. I, yes. You, know, you said something about this earlier. Kendall said, I saw a TikTok do grapefruit ones. Yes, thank you, Kendall. That's a really good um, point. I haven't experimented it, but I want to. You can do all citrus. You don't have to do oranges. You could do lemons, you could do grapefruits, you could do blood oranges. That would be really pretty. You could just dry them and then you could alternate the red and the orange. That would be beautiful. You'd still have the same effect. I was talking to Blair earlier if I wanted to try and dehydrate a pomegranate, but I don't think that would work. <laughs> I just don't think that would work. Good thinking in, pra in theory, not in practice. So anyway, how to string the oranges. I have my toothpick tied to the embroidery string, well taped. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna choose which side is more, has that more golden sheen to it. I think it's this side. So on the back side, can we actually go back to the other camera? Mm -hmm. One second. 
Again, this is not, this is live, folks. This ain't, this ain't pre-recorded. So if I wanted this side to show, I'm gonna actually stick it through the front of the side I want it to show. And then, so what I do is I just then poke it through and thread it through again. All right, very good. Wonderful, coming through, coming at you. And there, now you see the pretty side. Um, somehow that happened miraculously without me doing it because I'm just, oh wait, no, never mind. I'm not that good. So this is another step I like to do. You don't have to do it if you want another effect. I like to have the oranges sealed in place. So I just go back around on the back side where the thread is mostly showing across the orange and I thread it through again. So that way there's a knot around the end of the orange and they don't move around on the garland. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until I run out of oranges. Um, does anyone have any questions in the comments or does anyone have any fun ideas? Also, what else can I talk about? I love Christmas crafting a lot. I also love cooking a lot. So when there's a craft involving food, I'm very happy. Anna says, perfect, ingenious, just like Aaron. Oh. And she also said, next Christmas, dehydrating stream. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just that, they should make, you know how Netflix has, I would watch that. You know how Netflix has just that channel where it's just a fireplace burning? Mm. I would watch a channel of just oranges dehydrating. That's more Christmas to me at this point. This is the Christmas of dried orange. Dried citrus, I should try lemons. Because you know what happens when life gives you lemons? You dehydrate them. You dehydrate them and then make your Christmas tree beautiful. Has anyone seen that, um, what is her name? Sandra Lee video? I feel like that where it's just like, beautiful, 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 beautiful. <laughs> I cannot wait to eat this. Sally says blood orange, grapefruit, orange, lemon, and lime. Rainbow garland. Oh my gosh, rainbow garland from a rainbow friend. <laughs> I'm also rainbow, so that's not a judgment. That's just a funny remark. My rainbow friend, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone read the book when they were growing up, The Rainbow Fish? It's, a sad yes. it's so sad. I reread it as an adult, and he's like... He gives all his rainbow scales to everyone. I know, but then he's not beautiful anymore. Right. Oh, but isn't he? There's a controversy about that book about how he's not, about how him conforming to other people's bullcrap. Wow, controversial book from a controversial stream. Just kidding, this is not controversial. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we're making quite long progress. It's beautiful, lovely. They're staying in place because I knotted them. And yeah, so if you want to spend a whole Sunday dehydrating oranges and making some garland, do a Christmas movie marathon, maybe like have a bunch of food out and just have a orange party. I think it would be great. Also, fun fact, I love after the holidays, you're gonna think, what can I do with all this strong popcorn and oranges? I haven't tried it yet. There is adhesive you can buy at Michael's that you can spray on that actually seals it. So I would do that and then just spray it and then tuck it away and then take it out for next year and then you don't have to dehydrate as much. With the popcorn, I really like to leave them out for the birds at my parents' backyard. I do this at my parents' house as well. Um, and then the birdies just have a fun little Christmas feast as well. Oh, also- Kendall if, literally just said that, by the way. Oh, that's awesome, then Kendall. one for animals to eat too if you hang them outside. Yeah, you, I have seen food. that. You can do an edible tree um, and decorate your tree with all kinds of fun bird feeder ornaments. Also, I did have time in between other stuff to zhuzh up the garland so you can see the end effect. These all, see all the cute Christmas cutesies. So yeah, with garland making specifically, you really just, you gotta keep at it. You gotta keep touching it up. You gotta keep adding more and then it'll look really, really nice. Jenna also wants to know if the citrus loses its smell when you dehydrate it. Um, I don't think so. I think it has a more like kind of cooked, not burned, but baked kind of deeper, more pungent smell, but it's not that fresh orange juicy smell, but it definitely has an orange smell to it. Also, they thought I was crazy. If you get a dud like this one, I eat them. I think they're pretty good. Zach likes them too. Blair, not so much. But yeah, dipped in chocolate, good. they might be good. But I Ooh, eat them. Yeah. I think they're good. I eat the zest and all too. But yeah, um, that concludes the craft segment of this whole thing. But I've had so much fun with you guys. Um, also remember that crafting is love. Merry Christmas and 
Happy holidays, everybody. What, Ryan? Just show off in the deco. Oh, you work. Show off. Oh, see? Here's the oranges. Oh, it's got a knot in it. Here's the oranges. But they're all tied together. Look at they're that. all tied together. Very Happy nice. Great. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Happy holidays. I hope everyone has an amazing December. Stay safe. Um, and that concludes the craft segment. Woo! Oh, look. Our best friend is calling. Wonder what he has to say. I know every year for Christmas, we expect a Santa as a visitor, but you know what we don't expect as a visitor? How about other visitors? That's right, the aliens. Um, the aliens have landed in Christmas Town, and what are they gonna do with all that junk, all that junk inside their trunk? I'm gonna bet that they're gonna get you uh, abducted and taken back to maybe a Christmas uh, planet where it's Christmas all the time. And, you know, people have time to look at Christmas villages because I sure hope um, that would be the case. You might observe it with, you know, your eyes and look at it and go, wow, I'm so glad that uh, my friend spent so much time setting up this Christmas village. Um, I should really showcase it. Okay, um, that's all. Bye. You look great. Don't worry about it. Also, the mic's on now. Oh, also, the camera's not on. Oh, my God. We're not experiencing on. some technical difficulties. What, what is wrong with Santa Claus? So, we have a very happy uh, surprise <laughs> visit uh, with Santa Claus because we're getting close to the end of our stream. So, um... Thanks for coming, Santa, on time, finally. Oh, well, you know, just had to rearrange my whole schedule. I mean, not a busy guy or anything, just delivering presents to all over the world. But it is December 8th, so I'm just kind of curious as to, like, what houses get chosen first Listen, on December 8th. Time works differently for Santa Claus. Oh, okay. The whole month of December is actually all Christmas for me. Oh, okay. So, it's right now, for me, like 8 o'clock... Easter Standard Time on Christmas Eve. Oh, okay. All right, so you still got plenty of time. Oh, uh, I have to go around the whole world, Brian. Oh, you do know my name because you are a Santa Claus. Of course, and you've been very naughty. Oh, no. I mean, well, we are, we're entering our naughty or nice uh, uh, segment of the show. We Perfect. Had a bunch of different people actually um, wrote in different things to ask if um, they were okay with... Um, They're pardoned. If they're pardoned or... or well, let, let me just... Nice. Let me say, first off, listen, it's 2020, y'all. And I'm going to be very forgiving, okay? <laughs> so, if you're doing something a little bit bad, still going to be nice. Because, hey, we're all human. Except some of us are mythical creatures. <laughs> who, 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 who don't experience time in the same way that Exactly. Okay, well, on that note... Because then it all catches up in January. It's do you crazy. Wanna, do you want to start with um, the nice list applications or the naughty list apologies? Uh, let's uh, let's start with the nice list applications. Okay, nice ni nice, uh, the nice list applications. The first one we have um, Dylan from California. Hello, uh, Dylan. Um, he says he stops to pet uh, the squirrels. Naughty. No oh. Very bad, Dylan. Oh, Unforgivable. My. Squirrels are all a part of an underground organization down to take over all society, and it's well known. Like Bad Dylan, don't help those squirrels. Call for you. Do they? Do they have? Um, do they have the same sense of time as you? Squirrels? They uh, yes, they're just no, no, they're not like me. They're normal. <laughs> they're just normal what do you think? The squirrels. Okay, all right. Crazy. Um, Perrin says that um, she uh, is going to be on the good list because she bought two extra Switch controllers so all her friends could play. Ah, but capitalism is naughty, Perrin. <laughs> so, <laughs> you are naughty, sorry. I thought you were going to be forgiven. I am, okay, but right. these are very bad offenses. Okay, these are bad offenses. I get that. I and you're putting up my, my cool naughty banner when they get stamped naughty, right? Yes, I'm putting up your naughty banner that Good. you specifically asked me for. Yes. You really want and a nice one. Banner. And a nice one. But they haven't, no one has surpassed no. it yet. <laughs> um, Hannah says that uh, she recycles. Recycling. Okay, so unless you're recycling it yourself, like you're boiling down the plastic, you're melting it into like a new toothbrush or something. Naughty, Hannah! Oh, you don't know where that's going. Oh, man. A lot of times it just gets thrown in the dump. Does the North Pole have a recycling center? 
Uh, so we have a couple elves, or green elves, yeah. that they uh, recycle all of Santa's stuff, all and Santa things. compost, yeah. and Santa's very good about recycling, and all of my urine gets filtrated as well. Oh, it's oh. drinkable, and delicious. Um, Hank from Germany says uh, that he did some of the dishes today without faking an injury or an illness. Ah, naughty. How? How, Santa? How because you only did some of the dishes. Oh. I saw you! I saw you with the dirty dish under the sink! I saw you! And it's going to get moldy there. Oh, man. Oh, well. Perrin has um, also written in since um, she uh, followed up on here and she also followed up in the chat. Um, and she just said, No! Santa! Listen, Dems the brakes. There's still time. I mean, not on my timeline, but on your timeline, to change it, okay? So good luck. Oh, no, that's rough. Um, we have a few other people. We've got to have at least one nice here. person here. Well, I, we, also have, we also have our naughty list apologies. Do you want to go through those? Yeah, let's see if, any, let's see if we have any redeemers. All right, um, we have Diane, um, and she says, I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me. I can't help it that I'm popular. That's true. Oh, so is that nice? That's nice. That's a nice Being one? popular is very nice. Wow. Good for you. Nice. I'm the most popular guy this time of year, and that makes me super nice. <laughs> it's like turning into Trump. Huh? <laughs> it's Trump Santa. I'm the best Santa. I'm the brightest Santa. <laughs> and I have the most beautiful. People are telling me I've got the most beautiful sleigh. I'm working on my bit. Santa's gonna get into comedy next year. <laughs> um, Robert says he's uh, not sorry. Uh, he thinks he Santa's getting an apology, but he better check that list and think twice. Honesty is always the best policy. You've just been upgraded to nice. Oh, wow. oh, this is working very different. Good job. Congratulations. Um, Dylan says. Uh, he has to have a, 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 a apologize to you because all he said was for last night. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. Is that naughty or is that Wait, nice? What? It's a little bit of both. Santa. You were there. Oh, right. A little bit of both, so I have to press both buttons. Put, put them both on there. There it is. Nice naughty. Looks good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to check up on chat real quick. Uh, Sally tells Perrin to skate better. I don't know if you know what that means. That just is oh. a reference to a Disney Channel original movie. <laughs> Classic. Uh, she should skate better. Ducks. No, hey, Brink. Hey, Soul hey, so skaters. Far, these applicants are not having a high success rate, but uh, that was before, I guess, probably the, the, nice, the nice ones we had. We had a couple um, of nicies. Anthony agrees with you that you can't uh, forgive capitalism. Thank um, you. So it's very naughty. <laughs> Thank you. The red in my coat kind of shows my opinion on that. <laughs> uh, but Nate says um, that uh, Santa just hates capitalism so he can have a monopoly on the gift market. Who, who what do you say against this? Who have you been talking to, Nate? <laughs> who have you been talking to? Um, oh, I'm uh, watching you extra hard now, Nate. Anna is saying, She's ready for Santa to uh, stand up. Oh, no, just for Santa stand up. Oh. I mean, I think she'd be happy with either. Yes, I'm working on it. Look, I've got my set going, okay? My five, my, my cut down five. What are they called? I'm new. It's my first class. I'm working on it. Tight five. Tight five. Thank you. Um, and then the last one we have here is from Amanda, and she says that she's sorry she left her um, bowl of ice cream with peanut butter it's still on the spoon in the sink. What the hell is this? Oh, goodness. What the hell is this? Oh, no. Oh, you dare even ask that question? Oh, no. Like, you think you can get a nice? That is a naughty! That is a naughty, naughty, naughty! Oh, goodness. <laughs> Classic, but with a tiny holiday spin to it. So we are going to make a whiskey sour. Now, I don't drink a lot of whiskey sours because I'm a vegan, but I made an exception because I could not make this beautiful cocktail and let it go to waste. So the secret in a whiskey sour is an egg white. That's what's gonna make it really frothy and creamy. Secret is, yeah, you could dry shake it, which means without an ice cube, but we're gonna speed up this process and put one ice cube in there. And you're gonna shake it, and the idea is to shake it and mix it 
around so the ice should go to the bottom of the tin up back to the glass and then back around and make a nice little circle with that cute little motion that I'm doing and you're just gonna shake it honestly until you cannot take it anymore the longer you shake and the more frothy your drink will become all right so you got that frothy egg white down there in your glass Next up, we're going to do the sweetener. Again, y'all know I was going for maple syrup because it's the holidays. We are going to do half an ounce of maple syrup. Mm -mm -mm. Now the booze, my favorite part. Um, you're gonna use whiskey bourbon and you're gonna do two ounces of your choice of whiskey bourbon. Boom, look at that. It already looks so milky and frothy and delicious. And you're gonna do about three fourths of an ounce, which usually is a fat wedge and a little bit more of a lemon. Squeeze that in there. This is what gives it the sourness, your fresh lemon juice. All right, bring some fresh ice cubes in there, smack that tin back on and get to shaking. And again, really, you cannot overshake this. Just shake and shake and shake some more. Once that tin is really nice and cold, you're good to go. Okay, here we go, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Now here I was too busy watching myself in the video, oopsies, but what you're gonna wanna do is put fresh ice in your glass, which I clearly did not do. All right, here comes the froth, watch it come out. Oh my gosh, look at that top, that is so delicious and a perfect holiday cocktail. And then onto the garnishes, you're gonna put some dashes of bitters, about three dashes of bitters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then of course, a little sprinkle of cinnamon and a little sprinkle of nutmeg and voila, you have your holiday whiskey sour, enjoy. Really, wow. You guys are way worse than I thought you were. Uh, as is, as is, as is Santa Claus. I don't. What? I don't. I, I don't know if any of this is canon. So just, just go with it as you will. Okay. Uh, all right. You got five seconds. Gondolas. All right. Let's listen to a story. Night before Christmas by Clement Clark Moore. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that Saint Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the roof there arose such a clatter, I sprung from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutter and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his curses they came. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher, now, Dancer, now, Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew. With the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, 
I heard on the roof the prancing and pouring of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur, from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, he, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Fantastic. Hi, right, lovely story, Jillian. Thanks. Thank that was great. Thank you so much. Oh. Well, ah, sweet. All right, uh, to close off the night with uh, one more song. It's a pop song. This is Justin Bieber and Chance's, Chance the Rapper's new song called Holly. Santa Don't think that he is a saint He might go down the chimney Cause I sat on his knee and I gave him a list and he's making me say Santa won't you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me you feel so jolly, 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 jolly Another to the North Pole Can't wait another second The way you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me Feel so jolly I don't do well with that Rudolph Sing it He's not my favorite reindeer Once he tried to bite my hand off But the way that he flies when he lights up the sky Is making me say Light so rosy, 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 rosy. Light so rosy, 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 rosy. And knock, flying on a sleigh to the North Pole. Can wait another second. Is the way you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. It feels so jolly.
Can't wait another second, eggnog, fly another second to the 